Hi, I'm Gabriel Stelion Shanks, the Artistic Director of the Drama League. And I'm Nylan, the Associate Artistic Director of the Drama League. And welcome to New Visions, New Voices Does Shorts. New Visions, New Voices is the only after-school program for high school students in the country to specifically focus on the skills and techniques and artistry of stage direction. And by making the student the director, they learn leadership skills and public speaking skills and how to embrace their artistic visions. Now, during the pandemic, we've been working with 11 of these students nonstop as they wrote new theater pieces and directed them with professional actors in live digital captures for you to watch this evening. We would like to send a special thank you to Ernst and Young for their support of New Visions, New Voices. And none of this could be possible without the help of Nathaniel P. Claridad, Sheree J. Davis, Catalin Stillion, and the students of New Visions, New Voices who embark with us on this journey during such trying times. Thank you so much. You were amazing. <laughs> so enjoy New Visions, New Voices does shorts. Hi, I'm Jamie. I was inspired by the fact that I never really went anywhere or had much fun before quarantine. I wrote this piece to show how toxic it can be to stay inside and not live life to the fullest. Now, without further ado, here's my short, Her Mind. I had the most amazing dream, Doc. I met the love of my life. It felt so real. You know that feeling of um, happiness? That's so unbelievable. I don't even know how to explain it. Imagine you're at your favorite restaurant and you're having food that you haven't had in years. That's how it felt. I, I met someone. I could kind of see her now. Can you see her, Doc? She's about 5'9", brownish skin, like a golden brown. She's the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen. Her eyes are beautiful, hazel, like a greenish brown. I'm telling you, Doc, if you saw her, you would be shocked by her beauty in her. Her hair, it's curly, honey brown, like a big curls and puffy. I love it. That's not even the best part. Her personality is flawless. <laughs> She's funny, and nice, trusting, honest. I couldn't ask for anything more. I mean, I, this might be childish, but, but I think it was love at first sight and and from what she's telling me, she feels the same way. She feels the same way about me too. Like she sees me beyond my sickness, schizophrenia. I can't do anything I want. And growing up, I was always sheltered because of my sickness. I didn't get to do whatever I wanted. I didn't even get to go to real school. My mom always kept me inside, and I understand why. The kids were bullying me. You see all these kids and groups going to the mall, or couples 
going on date night. That's the kind of friendship I want. And I know I can't have these things. I have to imagine them. Anyway, um, I, I don't know how she uh, appeared. She just showed up in my dream. She told me her name. And she came to my house. And we got in her car. And we just drove. <laughs> and the music was blasting. And we were just dancing. <laughs> we were just... And the, the car was just going so fast. It was, and then, I felt so free. I, I felt like I wasn't being judged for the first time. You know, um, you know how, um, how those people read books or watch movies so they can um, imagine how, to, how they can cope with things? That's what I have to do, but I use my imagination. Um, anyways, sorry, Doc, I, I went off track. Um, just so you should know that don't waste your time. Do what you want. Don't limit your children. Life is special. Maybe you should know that. You're a doctor. Anyway, I forgot what I was telling you about my dream. Anyway, we, uh, we went to this amusement park. It was like the ones you see on TV, but not as big. They had this Ferris wheel. It's one of my favorite rides, and just listening to all the people on the rides and laughing, it was, it was great. Rue is uh, the reason why my dream was so great. She's like, um, she's like my soulmate. She made me uh, truly see what life is about. She showed me how to live life. And looking back on on my life, I regret not doing what I wanted to do. I know I'm dying. It's no secret. The doctors don't know what it is, but I understand when my mom kept me at home. Kids would bully me. I know this is gonna sound crazy, but I think it's time I live my life. I don't care what anybody thinks. I need to switch things around. I'm older now. I, I, I need to take control of my life and do what I want to do. When I leave this hospital, I'm going to go for a long drive. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And it's going to be the start to my new life. I'm going to meet someone. Doc, when do you think I should, I should leave? Oh. Oh. <laughs> of course, now, now the meds wear off. <laughs> Um, can I, uh, just, uh, please get some, um, some meds, um, uh, the, 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 the pain is, uh, worse than ever. Please. Can, can I, I need to leave. Can I please? It's a medicine. Hi, 
I'm Sarah Klimberg. Um, I was inspired to write my short as a response to the current surge of fake news and conspiracy theories. I was intrigued by how easy it is for certain groups to ensnare a large audience by, you know, spewing fake, falsified facts and parading them around as truths. I was also inspired by simultaneously spooky and fun TV shows and movies, including the Rocky Horror Picture Show, The Twilight Zone, and WandaVision. Hopefully my short will create a new false news trend that we can all get behind. Now, please enjoy my short, Donut Trust Blindly. Thank you. Hello, Doctor. Yes, it's Carolyn Everly. I was just calling to ask if my results were in yet. Yes? I understand. Yes, thank you, Doctor. You too. Goodbye now. Hello, darling. Well, what did the doctor say? Are you well? All right, then. Let's go home. Hey, how about we do something fun? Perhaps we can bake something. <laughs> yes, but what? Let's decide while we walk. What is it, darling? It appears to be a recipe. How strange. What's so strange about that? Well, it's for jelly donuts. How perfect. That's what we can make. Yes. And I just got some more jelly at the store. It was on sale. But the day I decided to buy the ingredients, we just happened to find this lying around. Donuts sound delicious. Let's make them. Absolutely scrumptious. Did that donut just move? Jamie, it was probably just a breeze. No. Are you sure? Hello? It's work. You're fine. Carolyn? Carolyn? I... Oh. Hello? Yes. Yes, we need an ambulance. It's my wife. She's injured. Jamie, I'm fine, true. But your condition. You know, I, I still can't believe it. The doctor just told us you weren't. It's a miracle. You have plenty of time to be overprotective. This is good news. You know, that's just an awfully large thing to be wrong about. And there have been so many strange occurrences since then. Drop it, Jamie. This is good news. Let's dwell on that. I'm tired. Let's head home. Jamie? Yes? Do we have any ice cream? No, I'm afraid we don't, dear. But perhaps I can go get us some. Well, I'll go. No. You know what the doctor said about excessive movement? I know, but... Look, just a few more days and everything will be fine. Okay, I'll be back before you know it. Oh, <laughs> 
can't be. Carolyn! Hi, I'm Ashley. I've looked forward to this class every week because I've always had this particular story in my head. And now through the Drama League, I was able to bring it to life. I'm so excited to introduce you to these characters in my piece, Past Relationships. Enjoy. Hey, it's me. What's up? We got a call about a woman standing on a ledge at this... Pardon, but how's that important? We specialize in illegal power usage and... Uh, let me finish, Landine. Sorry. She's on top of a skyscraper, but all first responders and nearby citizens fell to the ground, unable to help for some reason. We can assume it's a use of an illegal power or someone using their power to, you know? All right, I'm gonna head out. Be careful. Excuse me, miss. I know times might seem tough right now, but trust me, you can get through this. I need you to face me and tell me what power you have that made everyone around you fall into a deep sorrow. It can't be. <laughs> wow, after all these years, I finally get to see you again. Pardon? <laughs> How the human mind loves to tease after all the mourning, the depression, the suicidal thoughts. I finally found you. Wait! <laughs> wow, you managed to get some awesome powers too. Huh. How much did that cost, sis? <laughs> what are you talking I about? I still can't believe that it took me almost killing myself for you to finally come back. Now wait a sec, I... <laughs> I've searched for you for so long with no result. <laughs> and now we're in our near, and the universe finally gave me the one thing I desired for so long. Now, ma'am, I... I missed you for so long! Yeah! Look, I have no idea what you've had to endure, but I am not your sister. I'm sure she was an amazing woman. I'm very sorry for your loss. How rude. Pardon? How can you say these things to me? Whoa, 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 calm down, miss. You I... disappeared for 12 years, and this is my reward for my search for you? How long? I... Everyone thought you died. I was the only one who had hope and search for you. <laughs> I bet you don't even know my name. I'm sorry, I, I don't. I bet you don't even know your name. Your name is Alice, and I'm your sister, Alyssa. Come on, Alice. Let's go home before it's too late. No. Excuse me? I came here because I have a job to do. <laughs> I guess I have to keep talking, huh? N now, wait just a sec. 
Now this will get you. <laughs> yeah, your birth defect. B birth defect? Yes! Your powers did not affect your eyes, Alice. You were born like that. That's impossible. No one is born this way. You're wrong! You were born with heterochromia iridium. The chances of being born with two different eye colors is less than one percent. Face the truth, Alice. You can't run anymore. Stop! Again. I came here to do a job, and I'm here to complete it. So tell me, who gave you this power? Stop walking right now. We're past the calming you down stage. I'll ask again. Who is your provider? Speak up now. I ain't. I ain't telling you anything. <laughs> ah! oh, that's wrong. What's wrong? Ah! Looks like I finally found you. <laughs> Looks like giving this depressed child powers was beneficial in the long run. However, if you hadn't disobeyed me back then, London. How do you know? <laughs> Oh, that's right. My sister swiped your memory so you won't finish what you started. Hmm. Well then, it was nice seeing you again, London. Next time we see each other, you will come home with me. Hey, I'm Lily Kishpelema. I hope you take away my piece that pain doesn't have to stop you from being your best. Thank you to New Vision New Voices for the chance to explore my directing writing piece. Please enjoy my short film, His Day, My Night. Thank you. Look at all these pictures. Ezra. I still remember the first time we met. It was my first day at digital. I thought you were just a normal guy at the office at the same time as me. I was setting up my computer and you walked towards me. You wanted to know my name. And me being rude, I said, why should I? <laughs> I guess it was a great impression I gave you because you want to know more about me. <laughs> I remember this like it was yesterday. <laughs> if you stepped on my boot and the sole came off, and the crazy part was that um, it was snowing, so I had to hop to the car. 
Yeah, but it was also the first time you told me you loved me. And it's really hard to forget moments like that. <sighs> or, um, like the, uh, first Christmas we had at your family house. Oh, or like um, that time I bought you ice cream at Stone Cold Creamery and you were answering a phone call. So I paid and you got so mad because I paid and you had invited me. And I asked you, well, has anybody ever, another girl at least, bought you ice cream before? And you said no. And then I said, well, it's the first time for everything. And then we looked at each other and we laughed. <laughs> oh. oh, look at your tiny handwriting. That we used to make fun of. And laugh at. <laughs> Why can't we be together, huh? I guess, um, just weren't meant to be together. You know, um, like all these other love stories. You know, why does it hurt? Anyway, you always talked about your love of travel and adventure. And I mean, that's why you even took your job, your promotion that required you to leave. And in addition to me, I accepted the chief of design job, you know, but even after you promised to come back for me so we could be together, you, 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 come to find out. I learned from our friends that you asked me to marry you because you wanted me to leave with you and leave my job. And the more I think about it, the more furious I become because you knew about my promotion and you knew how hard I worked for it. You know? Then, then you had the audacity to propose to somebody else while we were still together. And on the, on the day that I least expected, no explanation, no call, no voicemail, no text, not even a freaking email. And then you posted it all over social media. Ah, uh, you know what? You won't be the one to break me. I, um, you know, you, you may have been the one who broke my heart. <laughs> but you won't break me. You know, it's not all your fault. It's ours for trying to work something that didn't have any solutions. We just needed someone to make it official. But you know what? I still believe in love and relationships. I'm just going to use um, our relationship as a lesson. I don't wish you bad. Only, only good. You know, just... Why today? You know, why um, like this? I learned that if a person doesn't give you the same effort, then you, you shouldn't give it back to them. You know, why do I care so much about someone who cares so little about me? Zero interest. Huh. But mostly, why 
when I love someone who doesn't love me anymore, I mean, the way I thought, the way I needed it, I know it won't be easy, but I'm going to be fine. Oh, hola, mamá, hola. Sí, sí. Uh, eh, no, no, sí, estaré ahí unos 10 minutos. Sí, está bien. No, no, todo bien, todo bien. Yo más. Adiós. Oh, did I forget the time? <laughs> My mom can't tell her about the relationship because she can't know that I was in a relationship that started just so it could end. Not today. Today's my birthday. Yeah. Once I open the door, no more Ezra. No more tears. He's in the past. In the present. Tonight is my night. Tonight is my birthday. I am going to have the most fun ever. Hi, I'm Leo. I currently go to school at Information Technology High School in Queens. What I've learned from the Drama League is how to be myself and that there isn't going to be anyone else like me. I've also learned what it takes to be a leader in the room. And now, please, enjoy my piece, not anymore. I mean, why does this person think they know who I am? I love playing in front of audiences, but having this kind of privacy invaded makes me feel like I'm losing a part of myself from, from before all this fame. I gotta get a new number before more people find out. Hey, hey man, you should, uh, Stop drinking, I'm just gonna mess up Look, the- Look, just let me finish this beer, okay? I'm just saying, man, you know, it, it would, if you drink less, you might not break anything today. <laughs> well, that's what they deserve for not working. Hell, I'm paying for it, stop complaining to me. No, man, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it would be sweet knowing that nothing would break tonight. Look, I know, I know you're taking those drugs to help with your anxiety, but doing it with alcohol is not Don't gonna make it any Don't tell better. me what to do. Arthur, I'm Okay, just... does, does anyone else know about this? No. Does the press know about this? No. But there are rumors that you're on heroin. Well, I pay you to work for me, not to speculate. God, God damn it, Arthur! What the hell were you thinking? <laughs> Breaking all the keyboards? What, what is the matter with you? Oh, come on, we'll get new ones. Arthur, what? It, this is not about getting new ones, man. This is embarrassing. Would you shut up for a second? Look, Fink called. He wants us to promote his new album. So you could either stick with us, or I can find someone to replace you. I mean, there are plenty of people out here who will take your spot. Dude, what? What the hell is the matter with you? I'm I'm just trying to help. You know, you did the same thing to James. Okay, leave! I right, get out! Get the hell out of here! Security! No, 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 don't don't bother!
just one more shot. I'll be okay. <clears throat> Everything all right in there? Uh, yeah, just figuring some things out. Oh. Sounds like you might need some help. I've been there myself. You know, you can't uh, hide in there forever, Arthur. I know it might seem like everything is crap, you know, but there are still things that you can do to fix it. Time is endless. Just imagine all the possibilities if time wasn't a thing. And yet there is still much to discover. I want to. I've just had this dark, looming feeling my entire life. And I've tried desperately to run away from it, to hide from it. But I'll do my best to take care of myself. Why are you here? I'm here to check on you. I know you don't talk to many people. I heard what happened and I came rushing here. Many people don't survive these circumstances. I'm here to help you and not force you to do anything. Thank you. About a year ago or so, I put myself in a position that harmed the people around me and almost ended up in my death. I was using drugs and alcohol abundantly and I thought it was an escape. But instead, I ended up in a bed in the hospital and there was no one there for me except for this one person. I managed to write a song for them. And it reminds me of the dark times in my life when there was no one there for me except for, for this one person. I think it's funny how times change. I'm not dead yet. And I still want to play music for the rest of my life clean. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Francie. Uh, when I was trying to come up with ideas for a piece, I felt like I had a quarantine-inspired itch that I couldn't quite scratch. I was feeling particularly existential and nihilistic and frustrated with the loss of social norms that used to feel so concrete to me. Uh, more specifically, I was wondering what forms my identity when I'm trapped in my apartment without my peers, uh, what meaning social conventions like marriage take on when the world becomes so fragile, and perhaps the most shallow of the three, why I still had to be doing college applications while everything felt like it was falling apart. Uh, so I wrote it all down, directed, and now I'm sharing it with you. Please enjoy three mini scenes I call therapy. Just 
So, Clara. Fluffy. Fluffy. You're here because your family's concerned about you. I understand you think that you are feline, a cat. I am a cat. That is, after all, what the word feline means. I assume someone like yourself would understand that, Dr. Finetti. <laughs> Interesting, and tell me, may I ask when you started to feel this way? Oh, feel what way? Feline. I've always known I'm a cat. Ever since I was a kitten and I craved bowls of milk on the floor, or went crazy at the smell of fish, or you know, understood the allure. I know the essence of what it is to be a cat. And humans are disgusting. I am liberated. I see. And what do you make about the facts around you? That your parents are humans and your being a cat would be biologically impossible? That you're wearing clothes that were made for people? That we can communicate using the English language? How do you know we're speaking English? Excuse me? How do you know we're not speaking cat? My language. Well, <laughs> see, I grew up with English as my primary language, and I can't actually speak any other languages, and I can understand you. See, no English speaker has ever told me they were unable to understand me when I am speaking the language that I am speaking now. And all that reasonable logic leaves me to assume that I am speaking English. So, because no one else has told you that you're speaking cat, you are thus not speaking cat. Do you stake your entire identity on what those around you say? They say your hair color is called brown, and so it is. <laughs> My hair is brown, and I am not furry. I do not meow, I do not lay kittens. I am not a cat. No, Siamese cats aren't furry. Male cats don't lay kittens, nor do neutered ones. Who's to say you aren't an exceptionally talented type of cat, like me? I know that I'm a cat. I do not care what my family says, nor what you have to say. I know I'm a cat, because I believe that I'm a cat. I can't think of one good reason why I should admit to being anything other than a cat. Meow. 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 We have five minutes. Five minutes. We get along well enough. I guess I could bear your children. Well enough to spend the next 50 years together? A lot of people get married with less. You don't even like mustard. That's an absurd thing to be worried about, Corey. Well, I mean, I just feel like that means we couldn't possibly be a match. One day, I'm going to try to bring our son to a football game. Oh, our son will not be playing football. He'll be watching the game, Lily. And then I'll put mustard on my hot dog. And he'll learn from you not to like mustard. And then he'll wonder why he doesn't like mustard like Daddy. And then forever, that mustard will act like a symbol. Like a, a symbol of my lacking capacity for fatherhood because I couldn't make my son like an obviously delicious condiment, which means he never came to another football game with me because it was too scarring for him and he didn't have a close relationship with his dad. And then the next thing you know, our grandkids will be icing me out all because you don't like mustard. I think that you are catastrophizing, Corey. Yeah, well, I do that. Do you think you can handle that for 50 years? Yes, actually, I do. 
I haven't known you for that long, Cory, but I like you, and I don't want to end up alone, and I would rather take this five minutes to plan a life with you than just give up. Don't you think the mustard is a sign? I don't really care about signs at this point, Cory. Tell me about your family. How many siblings do you have? Eight. Eight? That's too many siblings. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> but what are your parents like? High maintenance. Yikes. One minute. Where do you see yourself in five years? High power job in the city. New York or LA. You? Riding on the Amalfi Coast. Huh. Ding! What do you think? I can pretend to like mustard. Sorry, I, I think you're muted. Hello. Hello, and welcome to your college interview. Thanks. Uh, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you. Ah, no problem at all. And don't worry, this is very low pressure. We're just going to measure the value of your mortal soul and the path to your future. Nothing to stress out about. Wait, what? Uh, for about 45 minutes, I'm going to ask you some questions about how you like to spend your time, what you're compassionate about, the de degree to which you've committed damning sins. Um, well, I am an honors student, and I'm on the varsity tennis team and the student newspaper. I see, I see. And um, how do you tend to do in the face of temptation? I'm sorry, how is that relevant? Also, what are you talking about? Uh, well, I'm here to determine whether you're on the path to eternal bliss or to utter and complete damnation based on things that are essentially out of your control. This is the evaluation of your soul. Some call it Judgment Day. Some call it the path to reincarnation. Some call it college interviews. That seems like a heavy-handed piece of dialogue. What's your GPA? 3.9? Shouldn't you be judging me on, like, morality or selflessness? That's hard to quantify, so we went with this system instead. What makes you think you're qualified to not live out a hellish eternity? Um, well, I started a community service club at my school. That's actually one of the activities listed on my common application. Oh, but did you do it primarily out of a want to buff up your resume rather than a genuine desire to help others? Uh... Remember, you can't lie to me. I guess? It's okay. Your intentions don't matter at all in the process. So how am I doing? Relatively well. There's uh, one more deciding factor. What's your parents' income? Huh. So much for holistic admission. Godspeed. <laughs> Hey, I'm Fair Michelle Reed, and I've had so much fun getting to know my actors and bringing these characters to life. I'm thankful for New Visions, New Voices for giving me the opportunity to bring a little bit of myself to life as well. Please enjoy my short, What a World. And she lives. <laughs> Extra precaution. Oh, sorry about that. Um, that should be good. What is this? What is what? Who are you? What, what, what's happening? Oh, right. 
I'm Faye. Nice to meet you. Oh, well, my lawyer's gonna have a field day with you. Jeez. Sensitive much? Sensitive? You kidnapped me. What? Oh. Where are my manners today? You. I'm a good person. I pay my taxes. I recycle. I'm not. You can't be serious right now. What? You're a terrible person. There's a video of you kicking a stray dog behind your house that got leaked last week. That was done in confidence. I don't understand why someone will record such a thing as, as a private as that. It's truly What about barbaric. you literally trying to defund mailmen? But they're, 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 they're threatening. Besides, I don't have to explain myself to you. You're going to have to do all the explanations. The court with my lawyers get involved. I wasn't aware dead people could press charges. I guess you learn something new every day. Oh, God. God! What is happening to me? You, my fair lady, have made some pretty bad political decisions, according to my client. <laughs> what? No, that, that, that's the most absurd and ridiculous thing. Hey, Olivia. <laughs> Can I call you Liv for the time being? No, you may not. Uh, tie me immediately. I'm gonna call you Liv. It just sounds better. Liv. <laughs> That's so ironic. What are you about now? It's just funny because your nickname is Liv, but you're gonna die here. <laughs> My brother Marcus is gonna know something's up when I don't show up to our meeting. Have you ever heard that story about the man in the coffin? Uh, no. So basically, the story starts off with the man in the coffin. He's dead. Then it goes back to when he's getting married to this guy. And then the husband and the brother of the boy start having an affair. I know, messy, right? And then they killed him when he was in the hospital at the end. Just goes to show you how men can't be trusted. Probably having problems with men because you're a psycho who kidnaps and murders people. Do you think you have any room to talk? Well, I happen to have very healthy relationships with the men in my life. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't laugh. It's just, you should really see the irony in all of this. The brother that you have so much faith in, the one who's on his way to get you, supposedly, is the one that hired me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I know that you're a psycho because the Marcus I know would never do such a thing. The thing is, he did. If I were you, I'd just enjoy your last few minutes. Oh, I know just the thing to talk about. What's your favorite Disney princess? Why, why, what, why would he do this to me? I didn't care enough to ask. If I get paid enough, I don't bother with the questions. How much is enough? To finish the job? 300 grand? 300 grand, I have shoes that cost more. This is why no one likes politicians, Olivia. You're annoying, you ask too many questions, and you don't know how to just go with the flow. Go with the flow, you are, you're, you kidnapped me, you're about to murder me, you want me to go with the flow? No, no! help, please somebody! Help, help, somebody! No one's gonna help her? Wow, what a world, am I right? Why are you doing this? Daddy always said, loyalty is power. But this, this right here, where I am compared to where you are, that's power. That's a look. That's exactly what keeps this job from getting old. You're, you're about to kill me. How is my face supposed to look? Uh, hello? I used to think that I was fine enough. And I used to think uh, that hello? I wasn't one enough. But I won't waste my time trying to figure out Faith. why you playing games, what's this all about? And I can't believe you hurt Faith. me. Faith! Damn! Can I listen to the chorus first? Thank you. Oh, that.
quite finished. <laughs> You're way more annoying than what your brother said you were. I really should be getting paid more for this. Wait! What if I paid you more? How much are we talking? 500 grand. 700 grand. That doesn't cover the other termination fee. Termination fee for what? Going against the previously made agreement. I'll pay you whatever you want. Whatever I want. Are you sure you want to do that? If it's going to keep me alive, yes. Then it's a deal. What do you want in exchange, Olivia? Protection. From your brother, I assume. Yes. Welcome aboard the ship, partner. Partner? No, no. You work for me. I still haven't decided what I want out of you yet. So until then, it's howdy, partner. We really have to work on your trust issues, Dad. Hi, I'm Kayla Stephanie. This is my second year in New Visions, New Voices. I wanted the audience to understand that just because everyone says you're this one thing, it doesn't mean that that is who you are. Everyone doesn't know everything you've been through, and they don't need to know. You'll probably recognize the character I'm trying to reframe. I hope you give him a chance. I hope you enjoy my short, They Wanted a Villain. Enjoy. Thor is so great. Thor can do this. Thor can do that. Ugh, Thor is so strong. What about me? Where's my appreciation? Where are my fans? Yeah. I'm just as great as he is. So what, I'm not the fastest or the strongest. The man who raised me and taught me that I was inferior to Thor isn't even my own dad. As I grew up, I realized I was never intended to rule Asgard. Not even the thought considered into my father's head. I was treated like an outcast. Not just in Asgardian society, but by my own parents. It changes a guy's mindset. Why, dear Loki, you might ask? Well, that's because I have magic. I can even siphon it. Oh no, wait, wait here, that's frowned upon. Nobody cares about magic here. To be accepted here, you have to be strong, haughty, confident, physically powerful. In essence, anything that can be visibly spectacular or destructive. I'm merely a simple sorcerer. Who cares that I'm a master of subtle magics that tends towards deception and manipulation? All my father wanted to do was hide me away, make me feel like I wasn't enough, but he messed up! <laughs> the Earthlings, see, they have these um, stories, legends, but I knew that they were more than legends. They said such cruel things about me. Called me um, a villain, uh, shallow, manipulative, the father of lies, a cruel predator, villainous, murderous villain. And reading all these legends, I, I realized I was destined to be the villain. I mean, I'm not exactly complaining. <laughs> people running around losing their heads trying to fix it. Uh, plus, they wanted a villain, you know? So I gave them one. I don't understand what everybody's complaining about me now for. Father was the one who sealed my fate. At least mother wanted what was best for me. Mm. She saw me for my talents. She saw both Thor and I as... Bright kids. You know, just because Thor is older and stronger does not mean he's better. He makes mistakes, we all do. I, just, I don't understand why mine are the only ones that people seem to remember. At some point, you know, you just start to 
accept the fact that you are inferior and the fact that you don't matter. The fact that you'll never be good enough for anyone. You know what the best part about being evil was? I had legions at my command. <laughs> All because I opened a portal. A portal. A portal, people, really, still, nothing? All, all I wanted to do was destroy the city and take down as many people in the process as possible. I, th th these people wouldn't have mattered in a hundred years. I mean, I see no harm in being the Grim Reaper. It could be something quick or, you know, something really quite painful. Guess we'll never know. I could have been greater. I, I, someone more powerful. Someone better. I, I tried. I, I really tried. Um, I couldn't just stand there and watch my brother be tortured by Thanos. I just had to plead my undying fidelity to Thanos. And just when I tried to kill him, I failed. And he threw my lifeless body to the ground. So that's where my story ends. Where I end. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't get it. I, I never will get a redo. Or will I? Hi, I'm Tiana, and I've always been interested in Europe, specifically French culture. Uh, New Visions, New Voices has allowed me to focus on using the environment as a way to create stories that provide me room to experiment with different kinds of audiovisual storytelling. And getting um, this kind of practice will help me to ensure that the audience's viewing experiences are more memorable and thought provoking um, with larger projects moving forward. And I'm thankful to the Drama League for infusing me in this program. Uh, without further ado, here is my short for peace. Hello! Hello? So, heading into town, are you? Uh, um, oui. Pourquoi? Mind if I join you? My taxi seems to have bailed on me. Uh, I... Sir, that's it. Yeah, just wait on the top. Where are you going? Bavard Street. Just keep heading straight through town. Can't miss it. Okay. Uh, just heading to the hotel. Thanks, by the way. No problem. <clears throat> I'm about to miss my hotel check-in time. Well, just call them and say you'll be late. I, I don't have their number and my phone is dead. Well, you can't drive like this with a guest in the car. Alors, pourquoi est-ce que vous de mon voiture? You said to get in. Forget it, man. We're perfectly safe. What? Not from the police? Kill police, huh? There is no police here. We enter town, I will slow down. What kind of apple were you eating? What? 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 I. Uh, Your apple, what kind was it? Red. What does that have to do with anything? Small talk. <sighs> hey, cool it on the pedal, would you? What? No police! We are fine! Oh, yeah? Who's that? She's staring daggers at you. Oh. I wanted to be on time. I wanted to stroll into the hotel with my backpack and my sunglasses like, yeah, I am on holiday, don't mess with me. They'd give me the best room in the house, it'd be so cool. This was supposed to be the one weekend where things just went smooth, you know? <laughs> of course, I choose to schedule a beach trip in the middle of winter when there is a severe storm approaching. The forecast said clear skies. Now, what do you call those? Monster clouds! Yeah, you should have picked another weekend. That's the thing, man. I don't have other weekends. Why? Work. I have a job. Oh, what do you do? Accounting. Oh. It's a horrible job. Do they pay you? Yeah. Well, it can't be that bad. 
Eu não me pego para você. Eu podia barely afford to come here. And I hate my desk. It always smells like vinegar because my boss refuses to use real cleaner. She says vinegar is real cleaner. It's better for your nose. How is it better for my nose? It's disgusting. And I never get enough sleep. My neighbors always having 2 a.m. parties like they're the only one in the building. And I have to get up so early and the commute is so long and I just want to move apartments and have What a What does bit... this have to do with anything? Nothing. I'm just... Small talk. Why did you pick up this place? Of all places to go on holiday. <laughs> it's the only place I could afford. Really? As a kid, I used to swim here in the summer. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the reason had to be something like that. In my humble opinion, this place is rubbish. <laughs> I bought the hotel in the summer of 72. Business has been declining ever since. Wait, what hotel? Large de Conquette. The only hotel in town. Oh, pull over there. The best place to park. Uh, why didn't you tell me you owned the hotel? What's it got to do with anything? Toute la chasse. Say la voix avec toute la chasse. Sorry. Quel inconvenient. As a matter of fact, I did mention it. I don't understand. Staff is taking safety precautions for old Nessie. Who? The storm. What's your name then? Raphael. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Looks like you've got room 150. I, I can't believe you didn't tell me. I did. Were you listening? You know what? Elise, go and check on room 150, please. Make sure it's the best in the house. Legend has it that the building is prone to tumbling over. Huh. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to slow down, yeah? Don't worry, we're safe. Buy your boss some extra vinegar when you get home. Why would I do that? You'd be her star employee. <laughs> One more step to getting a raise. Uh, no, she's not giving me a raise or <laughs> You never know. Elise, how's the room looking? Oh, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Raphael? Yes? Why did you come here? For peace. Hi, I'm Kimmy David, um, and I'm the creator of The Good Ones, and the way that this um, play came into existence is sometime back in um, early 2020, late 2019, I had this like melody stuck in my head um, of a song, which basically became the theme song of like The Good Ones and like birthed its existence. Um, for this scene specifically, um, it's kind of more like a way for me to release my anger at the amount of heterosexuality we see everywhere. And it's not that I'm mad at straight people, which people seem to think that queer people are, but like we don't care. It's just that there's just a lack of just queer representation, LGBTQIA, I can't speak in media. And and even when there like is a queer character in plays or in TV shows, their sexuality or their gender is never explored. So I wanted to produce something that could fill that space.
for me and for others who, you know, have been frustrated. So I hope you enjoy the good ones. I know I'm late, but you, you said you would be here. Here. Abit! You said, you said everything would be fine. You said. You liar! I'm here. You're here. I didn't mean to worry you. I... I was... You didn't worry me. Are you hurt? It looks worse than it actually is. Thank you for caring. What the hell happened out there, huh? You ran into an exploding building. I thought you said you had it handled. I thought I did. Things do not always go as they plan, unfortunately. Don't give me that shit. Why did you run back in? It was logical. That church is a historical monument. It means a great deal to my people, and even if it may not to me, having it destroyed would send an uproar to my nation. Is that what this is about? Hmm? Your nation? Your people? What about you? What about me? Your life was at stake. You ran into a building on the verge of exploding. You could have died. Why do you care? All of our plans were already set in stone. Ah. Ah. If I died, then that would enrage my nation. War would happen in my name and all our plans will be all futile. I apologize. Oh. I'll be more careful next time. I don't give a shit about your plans, right? I don't give a shit about your nation. I don't care about the future. I care about... Child. I care about you. I mean... You shouldn't. What? You didn't. Not before. Okay. I think, I thought you wanted to have me killed for a long while. Why have you changed your mind? Why did you say that? I'm not going to lie to you. Not worried about my absence, yeah? 
I was. But not anymore. Look, I don't know when I stopped hating you, okay? I don't even know why I did in the first place. I was all messed up in the head. I made decisions in split seconds and I stuck with it because it was easier. You contradicted yourself a lot. You hardly gave me a glance over before hating me, but I do not blame you. You should. You didn't deserve it. I didn't look into anyone or, or anything because I was scared to. Because it would make everything so much harder to figure out like who are the good guys and who are the bad guys. I didn't want any of these problems to exist in the first place, all right? But they do, nonetheless, even if you try to avoid it. Yeah, you showed me that. God, I thought you were this stuck up good one and you were just using me. But if I had stopped and looked for just a second, which I did, I would see that you were bright and charming. Admittedly stuck up brat. <laughs> the thought of being your friend wasn't so bad after a while. I wanted... I want to be your friend. I am fairly push many responsibilities onto you and often calculated without you. <laughs> because I didn't trust you because you are what you are. Bad one. Yeah. Though I didn't realize that these realization were mutual, I'm happy that you care about me. I care about you too. But I realize that my care runs deeper than it should. <laughs> I would do many things for you, irrational things. If you ask me to run into an exploding building, <laughs> I do it. You would do that on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Uh, what I'm trying to get at is that I like you, Chaya, a lot. In ways that friends shouldn't romantically. Are you following me? Yeah, yeah. I got it from the first sentence. Oh. I'm making this awkward, aren't I? <laughs> Sorry, I just, I thought that it would be unfair to you if I kept it from you. So, it, it, it's just, you know, please don't think of me any less if, you know, if I'm you're, having these feelings. So I just, you, you know, You have a habit of ranting when you're nervous. I, I've been told that. Yes, sorry. You don't have to apologize. I think it's kind of cute. Cute? And annoying, but mostly the first thing. Uh, why are you telling me this? Maybe our feelings are a little bit more mutual than you think. Do you like me? Yeah. Like, romantically? That's what that means, Austin. This is bad. No, you can't, you can't. What do you, what do you mean? You're doing a complete uh, flip on me. You can't like me. Wait, so, so you can like me, but I can't like you? I'm not lying to you. It's not that. I believe you just, it's just, just <laughs> what? You don't like me. I literally just said not that I Not the real me. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? I'm not who you think I am. I'm not... I'm not Oban. I'm, I'm not a guy. Well, I am. That, that's confusing, sorry. I, I was born a man, but I, sometimes, I don't feel 
like a man. When I was younger, I used to have longer hair. When I was aged to be presented to, to the people of my nation, my mother made me cut it. And I liked having long hair. I like it when it falls down on my shoulders and when I have to brush it out of my eyes or when I sneak into my mother's room and try on her highest pair of heels or wear the dress that were made for me by the clan when everyone thought that I would be born a girl. None of these were all necessarily mean that I am a girl or want to be a girl, but I like being called one. I like being called she, and I like it when people call me mistress or madam instead of young master. I like being Avi, not Oban. I'm sorry that you have to meet Oban and have to deal with Avi. <laughs> not a lot of people know about Avi. And I understand that I'm weird for having such weird thoughts. I'm sorry. Alvi? Uh, That's your name, right? Well, not the name that I was born with, but... What's the difference between... Aubin and Alvi. That that one's a a guy and the other's a girl. <laughs> Does gender change your whole personality? Listen, I don't care if you're a guy or a girl. You're still you, so bright and stuck up. Your hands are all greasy. Come on. I think there's heavy water in here somewhere. Okay. Hi, I'm Charlene, the writer, director, and composer of the next short. I have been going back and forth on what to write about, but one day in the middle of the night, I got a melody idea. I was playing around on my keyboard, and before I knew it, the song just came out so quickly. Then the lyrics, then the story. I hope you take the time to give these two characters a chance. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy my piece, Soulmates. I've never believed in love at first sight. You know, I think of all of my favorite stories involving romance, and they always include like tales of love at first sight. There's a, there's a Victor Hugo quote that goes, the power of a glance has been so much abused in love stories that few people will say that two beings have fallen in love because they have looked at each other. But <laughs> it is in this way that love begins and in this way only. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, that doesn't, that doesn't exist in real life. You know, that only happens in fairy tales. And <laughs> soulmates, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny concept. I mean, it feels like the universe will give you one and then make it absolutely impossible for it to work out. You know, how are you supposed to know if it's your neighbor or 
the random barista at the coffee shop or um, the guy at the desk next to you or to the girl at the desk next to you or, you know, your childhood friend that you've known all your life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I have some experience with soulmates. Um, crazy story, so. <laughs> um, I have known Andrew since the second grade and he's been my very best friend uh, until college when we moved to different states and you know we just drifted apart. It's, it's, it's weird, like that you don't, you don't miss someone until they're gone. And I never thought of him that way, ever, until he started dating Sophie. And you know, she's perfect. She's impossible not to like. I totally, I get it, but I just, I hate, I hate the way I feel when, when I think about her. I mean, is it, is it jealousy? <laughs> Ew. Ew. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, anyway. Oh, right, 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 uh, soulmates, soulmates. So, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna die alone and um, basically out of loyalty and uh, nostalgia, I'm here at Andrew's engagement party. Should be here any minute. <laughs> well, maybe he's not coming. You know, maybe he's got a lot to do. Maybe he's, you know, planning his perfect wedding to his perfect girl, and they're gonna have perfect kids and a perfect house. Oh, hi, Andrew. <laughs> what are you doing here? This is awkward. Uh, awkward? <laughs> Why would it be awkward? It's not awkward um, for me, right? It's well, I mean, we uh, kind of broke it off. With Sophie? Yeah. We broke up about a half an hour ago. But I thought... I know. So you're not... Not anymore. Does this mean... <laughs> yeah, if you want, I mean, do you? Um, where do we... Where do we... Even start? Even start? So much time has passed that I've forgotten how... To love you is the only thing I wanted to do. Since I met you To love you There's a million different ways But I know we'll find the best way to Sorry, I should have told you earlier I was waiting for the perfect day I never should have chosen her Wish I decided years ago to stay Now she's gone I know Thought you moved on I couldn't though I tried Am I late? A little. Another try. To you. I could never say the word goodbye. To love you. It's the only thing I wanted to do. Since 
since I, I met you to love It's the only thing I wanted to do Since I met you I don't understand. I mean, I think it's pretty clear. I've known since the third grade when you complimented me on my dinosaur backpack. <laughs> then why, why did you propose to her? I thought we'd be happy. Then we both realized that we couldn't settle. And besides, she could probably do better anyways. Yeah, <laughs> she definitely could. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> For the record, uh, I've known since the second grade when you complimented my pink boots and my sparkly tights. <laughs> they were pretty amazing. Yeah, they, they were. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. 